All right, another Come Follow Me. This is uh, section, let's see, 71 through 75. So four sections in here. These are short sections, not a lot to them, uh, but a couple of good points that they bring out. Uh, I don't have a lot of notes on these sections, uh, but as far as the additional things to the scriptures there, but I want to talk about the points that they make in the Come Follow Me lesson for this week. So, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper is the name of the lessons for this week. And uh, that's obviously a very important point for us to understand uh, in our lives, not to say that we are invincible when we live the gospel, but uh, that the uh, wicked will not prosper, basically, against, against the, the, uh, you know, the righteousness and the gospel. So, the first point that, bring, that they bring up in here, I thought this was really surprising, they bring this up. For section 71, that the Lord will confound critics of his work in his own time. There's always going to be critics of the gospel. If it is true, then there will always be people who hate the truth. Okay, that's Satan and his followers are trying to convince people against the truth. So because it is true, there's always going to be opposition. That's just normal. That's just standard. So just realize that there's always going to be opposition when you're doing what's right. Uh, and realize that, and I think this is a really good point that uh, kind of comes out in this, um, a subtle lesson maybe in this section here, is realize that it's not our job to confront or try to deal with those who want to detract from the gospel. That's not our job, okay? Our job isn't to argue with people over the gospel or fight over the gospel or try to defend the gospel. Our job is to live the gospel, find the truth, and keep learning more truth. If we do that, we don't have to worry about detractors. We don't have to worry about those, those, those people. So that, that, like it says here, the Lord will take care of those people in his own time. So you don't have to worry about that. It's his gospel. He will defend it. We don't have to. Okay, That's an important point for us to understand. The, the other thing that's important to realize with this, too, is that does not mean that we should be mean or detracting to those who are against the church, okay? You have to remember that uh, section, not section, sorry, article of faith number 11, we claim the privilege of worshiping the Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience, and we allow all men the same. Let them worship how, where, what they may. So this is an important thing is it's not our job to worry about what people are worshiping or what they're doing. That's not what it's there for. Our job is to just take care of ourselves and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let everybody else worry about themselves. You don't need to argue with them. You don't need to confound them. You don't need to try to prove who's right and who's wrong, anything like that. That is an important point. Now, I know for me, I, I, I like to listen. I like to understand the point of view of where people are coming from when they say things against the church. Because I might be able to learn from that and see why is that there? Why is that a point? Uh, so I, I do read a lot of anti-Mormon stuff and try to understand it better. Uh, because I, I do, I really want to understand and be open to learning more truth. Even if that means, and this is important, the way to understand truth is be willing to let go of what you believe, even if you believe it's true, to find more truth very important point. If you want more, watch our uh, video series on feeling, living your life by the Spirit, feeling the Spirit. I'll give you a bit more details in there. Uh, now, before I come back to that point, the, they talk about bishops in here a little bit. Bishops are stewards over spiritual and temporal affairs of the Lord's kingdom. Bishops have a heck of a job. It's a really unique position in the church. So uh, do your best to help your bishop out in, uh, in your area where you're at. They have some important callings and opportunities and need all of our support to help them. And especially if they're coming from a standpoint of love and concern in working with people, then that makes a big, big difference. Uh, I can seek opportunity to share the gospel. So this is an important point. I think this kind of goes along with the whole idea of not having to worry about your negativity of people who, who dislike the church. Find opportunities to share the gospel. That could be at work, that could be at play, that could be in your neighborhood, civic responsibilities, whatever it is. Find opportunities to share the gospel. I would say number one way to share the gospel is live it. Be an awesome example of living the gospel. The more you do that, the better. 
This YouTube channel, in fact, is one way that I have decided I want to share more of the gospel with people, is to talk about my notes and the, the studies that I've done in the scriptures. And hopefully it makes the scriptures come, is easier for people to understand the concepts and ideas in some, in some of the scriptures. Uh, I, admittedly, I don't have a ton of notes for the Doctrine and Covenants because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, when we get into like Old Testament next year, which I believe we're going to do, lots of notes. I've got a lot of fun stuff for Old Testament. A lot of cool things there. You know, New Testament, Book of Mormon, and especially Pearl Grey Price. I've got so much there, it's awesome. So the lots and lots and lots of more videos to come on those uh, books of Scripture. And the Lord blesses those who faithfully proclaim His gospel. So first, live it and continue to live it. Second, talk about it with people. Be open with it. How can you incorporate this into everyday life? One thing that's important, very important to understand about the gospel is there is not a culture or a, a civilization that the gospel cannot affect. Okay, If you think about some of the true principles of the gospel, honesty, integrity, hard work, those kinds of things, that still fits in a work environment. How can you apply these things into your business or your job? or other activities that you're involved with, whether that's sports or youth activities or other things. So realize that living the gospel doesn't mean doing the same things like we do on Sundays, but it's living those principles, honesty, integrity, hard work, showing love and kindness to others, learning from other people. One thing that uh, I like to do is I'll find sometimes people who are deriding from the church and I will ask them questions and I'll try to understand them. Got a guy right now that has inspired a couple videos uh, on this channel, uh, and that he used to be a member, I believe, and then he left the church. And he's writing a whole website of all kinds of stuff about the church to try to prove the truth or share the truth. And uh, so I've been reading it and going through it, and he wanted my feedback. So I've been giving him feedback of what about this or what about that, giving other points of view on what he's talking about and a different perspective. And he, they claim that they're open to learning and understanding, but I haven't heard back from them yet, so we'll see. But uh, it's just be open, guys. There's no reason to be afraid of the truth, even if it's coming from a different culture. There is no reason to be afraid of truth. If it is truth, then it will fit with all the other truths that you understand and help out. And if you have something that you believe in that's not true, sometimes when you, as you continue to learn, you might realize, oh, that's actually not correct. You know, I used to have a philosophy long ago, uh, being raised in the in Utah, that uh, you know the, the gospel principles, the blessings of the gospel, only apply to members. That non-members don't get those blessings, like prayer. And I that changed completely when I went on my mission. And there's tons of people who were praying and getting healings and miraculous stuff happening to them because they prayed. And I realized that it's that it's you know the membership is an important thing, but it's Having faith in Christ is the most important thing. And then as long as you have faith in Christ, no matter what religion you are or belief you have, he still will help you. The gospel still applies. That was a big aha moment for me. And I had to completely change how I thought about the gospel because of that. And since then, I just keep learning things. I go, oh, I used to believe this way. That doesn't work. That doesn't make sense anymore with these new understandings. So let's move on from that. So it's about finding truth. That is the key. Use the Spirit to help you to find more and more truth. There's tons of truth out there. It's all over the world and all different cultures throughout history. Learn the truth, get rid of the rest, and just hold those truths and build upon them and help. That's going to make a big difference. So thanks everybody for watching. Leave comments if you have thoughts and ideas on this video. Subscribe, share these as well. We'd love to have more people on here to learn and to share their thoughts and ideas as well.